Hi, I'm Chuck Gardner from NYSERC, the Academic Division of the Cyber Innovation Center. Today we're going to work through a robotics build from the Cyber Literacy Curriculum, Lesson 12, Whisker Navigation. In the Whisker Navigation build, the objective is to identify when a signal coming from VDD to the pins is being diverted to ground by way of these whiskers, which are connected to the chassis. So when the build is complete, it will look something like this. We're going to take it apart now so we can see how it fits back together. So for the Whisker build, you're going to need two Whisker wires, two three-pin headers, two 220 resistors, that's a red, red, brown stripe, and two 10K or 10,000 ohm resistors, that's brown, black, orange. In addition, the Bobot's going to have to be assembled so that these standoffs are on here, as well as these plastic washers with the Phillips head screws. So I've already got these in place, now we're going to install the wash whiskers. So if you're wondering what these nylon washers were for, today's the day. What we're going to do is, we're going to install the washers, we're going to install the wires with the hooks, one above the washers and one below the washer, like this. We'll put this one below. And one above. So the objective here will be to have one whisker above the washer, one below the washer, and that's so they don't touch when the Bobot is standing in a neutral state. From here, we'll install the three pin headers and the sockets don't matter. Remember with breadboarding, the rows are connected this way, not this way. Just because the diagram says I have to put it here, doesn't mean I have to put it here. For example, I'm gonna put this three pin header here, this three pin header here, wherever is the best opportunity to make connections to make contact with these whiskers. If I don't like where that one's placed, I'll move it down a couple of sockets. Before I've done any of the wiring, get the three pin headers where you want them, and then just the whiskers so they're close within a couple of millimeters of the three pin header. So it takes about equal force to touch the whiskers. From there, we're ready for resistors. The 220s are gonna go from the whiskers back to the pins. In this case, we're going to use pins 5 and 7. So for this, I call the left whisker. We're going to connect to pin 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And for the right whisker, I'm going to connect to pin 7. So through these two resistors, the Bobot's able to monitor the signals coming from these two rows. Right now, there's nothing happening yet. Even if I were to make this connection, nothing would be happening yet. All we'd be doing is connecting the whiskers, connecting this circuit to ground. But since there's no voltage, there's going to be nothing to monitor. So the 10K resistors, that's 10,000 ohms, we're going to connect to VDD. And what that's going to do is as soon as we turn the Bobot on, it's going to send high voltage through the VDD circuit. It's going to energize the circuit and the pins five and seven will be showing naturally high. So there's my build. So right now, if I turn the bobot on, these pins are showing high. I've got five volts through these resistors. The resistors are energizing these two rows. It's got nowhere to go. It can't go to ground yet. So it's gonna go through these resistors back to five and seven. So if I would hook this up to a laptop and enter the correct code, I would see pins five and seven as high or showing one. As soon as I make connections with the whiskers, now I'm diverting that electricity to ground. Remember, electricity wants to flow the path of least resistance. So if this electricity is coming through this 10K resistor, has the option of going through a 220 or to ground, it's gonna to go to ground. What's that gonna show at pin five? It's gonna show zero, it's gonna show low. Similarly, if I do the same on pin seven. So all we're doing at the whisker circuit is making a connection to ground, which allows us to monitor the state of pins five and seven as either high or low. That's about it for the build. From here, we're going to go to a quick code, and we'll come back and take a look at the output. So we've got our build done, and now we're going to take a look at the coding. And the first code in the PowerPoint basically indicates if the signal coming to these pins 5 and 7 goes to low, in other words, goes to zero, then sound a tone through the speaker. What students will notice pretty quickly is that unless you put this code inside of a do loop, it's not going to make any noise. So we've got the code in a do loop. We're going to run it. Control R. The code is running and it's waiting because it's not making a tone because these pins are right now at high. So as soon as we ground it, it sounds the tone for two seconds. As soon as you ground the other one, 
it sounds its tone for two seconds. And because each uh, pin has a different frequency, we hear the change in pitch. And that's the first code. We'll go to the second now. We're gonna move on to the second build in the Bobot 12 lesson. And what this does, it sends a, a command through the debug back to the laptop, which will indicate a visual of whether this pin is high or low. So we're looking for a debug uh, in the terminal window on the a laptop at this point. So when we upload the code, we're gonna see whether this pin is high or low, and the feedback is gonna be ones and zeros. So we're gonna upload the code. And now notice that the dongle is flashing red. That means we've got transmission of data both ways through this cable. So as we send a pin low, we're looking for an output on the laptop, change from one to zero. In this case, since I'm manipulating pin five, we see the one in the pin five column go from one to zero, similarly with pin seven. At this point, students are instructed to take this information and turn it into motion. We've got everything we need. We've got ones becoming zeros. They know how to test with ifs and thens to test all four conditions, right? What are our four conditions? We've got either one and one on pin five and seven. We've got zero and zero on pin five and seven. We've got a zero on pin five, a one on pin seven, and a one on pin five and a zero on pin seven. So with two pins, we're able to test for four total conditions, and that will allow us to go forwards, backwards, left, and right. So we're gonna take a look at code, the third code now. This is the challenge for the students uh, to get them to, to turn this into motion. So for the third uh, set of code, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn the Bobot into uh, a Bobot that can navigate by using its whiskers. You've already got the code on the screen, and we're gonna see what the output is here. Upload the code. So we've uploaded on pin one, and that's important because the Bobot should be rolling right now. And the reason it's not rolling is because we're on um, uh, switch uh, setting one. Remember, if we turn it to two, the Bobot starts to move. It's important to tell your students at this point to code on, set, on setting one so that the Bobot doesn't take off once they upload the code. So the purpose of this code is to say, okay, if there's an obstacle, turn to avoid the obstacle. Right now, if the whiskers aren't being touched, there's no obstacle. So the Bobot should be rolling forward, which it will do if I turn the code, turn the Bobot on. What this code's gonna test for now is if there's no obstacle, the Bobot's gonna roll forwards. If these whiskers are not touching the three pin headers, these two pins are seeing a one. So if I have a one and a one, roll forwards. If I make contact on the left whisker, which is pin five, that means the obstacle's on the left. I wanna avoid it by turning right. If I connect to an obstacle on the right whisker that's connected to pin seven, that means I wanna turn left to avoid the obstacle. And if I touch both whiskers, that means the obstacle's dead ahead and I wanna back to avoid the obstacle. So let's test that code now. And there's the Bobot 12 whisker navigation program.